Hey, what's up, folks? It is Mr. Kowalczyk. This is our lesson for today. So we're going to focus on 2.5 exponential function context and data modeling. So data modeling implies that we're going to be working with real world situations here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this top section here and teach that to you when I come back on the next day. So um, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to jump down here to modeling exponential functions from data. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you need to find one um or use an online version okay so you need that for today just want to point that out an exponential model can be constructed if we're given either the common ratio r or the and the initial value right so in this case what we would say is common ratio is r our common ratio and the initial value is going to be um whatever that is that zero where uh the first value for our x is going to be equal to zero that's our initial value there and then two input output pairs that looks something like where you might have x and f of x right where we have input and output pairs where we have 0 and 6 and 1 and 12 something like that right that's an input and an output and an input and an output some kind of different ideas now let's go ahead and focus on example 2 here and we'll talk about how we can use our calculator to help us out for zero is less than T is, is less than or equal to 30 minutes. So what this means is that time is going to be between zero and 30 minutes. The number of fans inside a large sports stadium can be modeled by the exponential function. F of T is equal to A, B to the T, right? There's our common uh, mother exponential function where F represents the number of fans inside the stadium. So that means this side here is going to be the number of fans. Um, T minutes after the doors are open. So we've got our input in terms of minutes. There are 47 people in the stadium two minutes after the doors are open, and there are 2,602 fans inside the stadium 20 minutes after the doors open. Use the data to write two equations that can be used to find the values for constants A and B in the expression for F of T. So just like we looked at our input output up here, we know that we have time as our input and F of T, fans at time T, is our output. So two minutes after the door opens, we know there are 47 people in the stadium. And then um, 20 minutes after, there are 2,602 fans inside the stadium. So we've got our inputs and outputs. We can write them horizontally, or we can also write them vertically, right? Where we have X and F of T. So we would say two and 20, and we would say 47 and 2,602. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our calculators to find this exponential regression model. So let's go through, we haven't used our calculators since before break. So let's go ahead through and practice how we're gonna do these again. So turn it on. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset my calculator, okay? So um, let me zoom out a little bit here so we can see the whole calculator. How do we do that? All right, I'm gonna go slow uh, to reset it, okay? so. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look down here for my memory, which is above the plus. So I hit second and then memory. And I get to this screen and I wanna to go to reset, which is my option for seven. And I wanna go over to the right to all. And I wanna select that. Uh, and now do I wanna reset the memory? I wanna to go to two reset and hit enter. And it's gonna reset all. So that's, that's gonna clear all my equations or any settings that I might have. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is I go to second mode or, or quit to get back to my original screen where um, we start from. And now the next thing that I want to do is I want to turn on my diagnostics and that's going to give me all of the data that I need when I do my regressions. So how do I do that? Well, I have to go to this catalog thing right here above the zero. So I hit second and zero or catalog. And this is that big long alphabetized list. And I want to go to diagnostic on. So I'm going to look for my um, D key, which is right here. So see the green D on my calculator. So I'm going to hit that and it jumps me down to the D. Now, of course, you can scroll down using your scroll, but there's a really long list of options here. So um, I don't like to do that. So I'm going to go to diagnostic on right there. And once my arrow is next to it, then I just hit enter and I hit it again and it confirms that it's done. OK, so now we're good to go. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump in. How are we going to do this again? Well, we're going to enter our table just like we have in this image down here. 
So how do we do that? Well, we go to stat and then we go to edit, enter. So I enter my two values. So I have two minutes and then I also have 47 minutes. Okay. Now up here, I know after two minutes, I have, whoop, nope, I made a mistake. I used the wrong table. We're using, these are inputs here. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say 20. And then I hit enter. So it corrects that. So after two minutes, there are 47 people in. And then after 20 minutes, there are 2,602 people in the stadium. Okay, so now I've got that in there. And um, we are moving forward. So now for this one, the next step, I'm going to select zero for exponential red, red uh, regression. I can't just tap zero. So what I'm going to do is I have to go back to stat. <clears throat> now I'm going to do calculation. And I'm going to go down to zero, which is exponential red regression. And I hit that. <clears throat> and I want to store my exponential regression just in case. So now I'm going to do my variables right there. Go over to my Y variables. And then I hit Y1. Okay. So it's going to store that right there. Then I go down to calculate and I hit enter and I get my exponential regression. So I have Y equals A times B to the X and my A and B value are right there. So for this one, what I'm going to get is I'll use my calculated values. So I have Y equals A, B to the X. I'm going to have Y equals, I'm going to round to three decimal places. A is 30.089 times B is 1.24, uh, actually 2498, the eight rounds the nine up to a 10. So that's gonna become 250 to the X. And then this, that's a 30. This is gonna be my exponential model for the stadium, okay? So just a reminder about how to use your calculator in that sense. Let's go ahead and flip over to page two and we'll do one more practice problem here before we move on. Okay, example three, selected values of the exponential function g are shown in the table above where g of x is equal to a b to the x. Now we've got here, we have x and g of x. So this is a horizontal table. So this is my input and this is my output. This is my input, this is my output. So I go through the same process. Okay, so now I go to stat and I'm gonna edit my table. And I've got my input, my first input is three. And my second input is eight. Go up and over. And then my first output is 21.54. And my second output is 3.62. So I'm noticing that as the inputs go from three to eight, they go up, my outputs go down. So that means that I probably should be looking at a decreasing uh, graph. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the regression. So I'm going to go back to stat, down to, or so over to calc, and then down to zero, which is my exponential regression. And I want to store that in there as well. So I'm going to go to variables, Y variables, store it in Y1, down to calculate, and I enter. Now I get that, and sure enough, because the values are going down, I get a B value between zero and one, which is a fraction. Um, so I can write that out, okay? Nope, that's all glared out. So now I have my Y equals A, B to the X. So now in this case, Y is gonna equal 62.801 times 0 0.6999. Uh, that's going to round up to seven point or seven zero zero to the x. So I round to three decimal places and I go up that way. Okay. So there's my model of a b to the x. All right. So that's what I want you to sort out here. Um, once you get your model, at some point with the practice problems that you're going to do, numbers one, four, and five, you're going to give be given some values for x or or whatever this exponent might be. And you're going to have to evaluate it at a certain number of minutes or weeks or whatever.
pay attention to your units, okay? I would say that because in the problems, that all the units aren't the same. So you might have to modify some things in order to get there. All right, thanks again for listening in and being respectful of the sub and getting that work done. We will uh, continue in the future. Bye.